What is Alpha Amigos? Today we're looking at induced drag. We'll be going through what it is and what it isn't, which is actually very important, you'll see in a second. How to calculate it and something called the Oswald efficiency factor. So what it is, well, the induced drag is actually a short term. The full term is lift induced drag. And this part is very important because it tells us what is induced drag and what isn't. So let me explain. Let's say we have an airfoil, so a wing, and we're going to look at it from the back. So it's just a, it's going to be looking something like this. And we are producing lift. So the force going up is like this. Now the wing produces lift by having high pressure underneath. So the pressure is high here and low pressure on top, relatively speaking. Because there is this pressure difference, air or, and fluid in general always wants to go from high pressure to low pressure. So that means that this pressure underneath, the air under here is being squashed out, being pushed out, and it's gonna to try to find a way to get to this low pressure. As a result, we get what's called winged vortices. And this is nothing other than just this air bleeding around and then circling around. And these vortices are effectively wasted energy. So there are many ways to explain what induced drag is and lift induced drag is. And they're all right, but they're just looking from different points of view. And we're gonna look at it from the winter vortex point of view. So, because these vortices, they don't really do anything for us. They're not increasing lift, they're not increasing the efficiency of the airplane or whatever it's flying. So they are just wasted energy. And because they're wasted energy, they are then grouped into in, in drag. And this is lift induced drag. So does that mean that anytime we have a vortex that we have lift induced drag? Well, this is where things get quite fuzzy. So for example, in the automotive industry where we have a car, just a simple drawing of a car, not, not a great one, but whatever. We have the flow coming in and we might get a vortex being formed here. Is that lift induced drag or is it just regular vortex drag? So another term called vortex drag. Well, if you think about it, anything that comes from a vortex can be grouped into vortex drag, but not everything that is a vortex is lift induced drag because if this doesn't come about because of lift, then it's technically not lift induced drag. The lift is not inducing this drag. So it's only just vortex drag. So the general rule that is a good one to follow is that if this vortex is being produced because of lift that's being produced, then it is lift induced drag. If it is not being produced because of lift, then it is just vortex drag. So that is what it is and what it isn't. This is lift induced drag, this is not lift induced drag. So how do we calculate it? <laughs> well, as I mentioned, there are many ways to look at this and uh, the best way, but it's the most complex, which we're not gonna go through in detail in this, I'm just gonna quickly touch upon it, is looking at the circulation over the wing. So if we look at the wing root and we go towards the wing tip and then we look at the circulation and if you don't know what circulation is, check out this video here. And we see how it changes as we go to the wing tip. The induced drag, is proportional to the change in circulation with span. So if, in other words, the sharper this drop-off is, the more induced drag that we have. Now that is a very complex way of looking at it. We're gonna look at a very simple way, which is a way that is quite common as well. And we just have this equation, which is the induced drag coefficient equals CL squared on pi A R E. So what are these terms? Well, this is the induced drag coefficient. This is the lift coefficient. This is pi, so 3.1415, et cetera. This is the aspect ratio of the wing, so we can know that from geometry. And this is something called the Oswald efficiency factor. And this is effectively just um, a number that we use to determine how efficient this aircraft, this wing is when producing lift. And E, Oswald efficiency factor, ranges from zero and Historically, we said it went to one, but we actually know that it can go higher than one for something called non-planar wings, which is where we have the wing coming along and then the wing tip actually juts up and it might even come across. The Oswald efficiency factor of this might be 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. So we boost above one, which means it's really good. But generally speaking, one is the upper limit. And for most aircraft and most wings on planes, the Oswald efficiency factor lies between 0 0.7 and 0 0.85. So that's pretty good. Um, if you go for a object that does produce lift, but not, it's not designed to produce lift, often this E factor will be lower, which means that this denominator is lower, which means that this entire term is much higher. Lift induced drag is much higher. So that is the induced drag. And if you have any questions about this, because it is quite a complex topic and I 
broke it down in a nutshell in like three minutes. Uh, drop it in the comments below. And we'll probably go through it this way in the future, but not in a fundamentals video, in a much more complex video. And if you like this, make sure to like it. If you see more like this, click the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.